This is going to be day four of elementary school fire alarm system replacement. And in today's video, we'll be picking up where we left off in the previous videos. For more information on this system replacement, make sure to definitely check out the first video in the series as that has the most information on explaining what we're doing with this system. But a brief rundown is we are replacing a conventional fire alarm system with a new notifier addressable system where every single initiating device is being replaced and all detectors are being upgraded to new smoke detectors. We are also removing all of the old strobe and replacing all bells with new horn strobes and some strobes in certain rooms were also being replaced with new horn strobes. But I won't go any further into this as that's all been shown before. Today's video will be picking up exactly where we left off in the last video, so let's get into it. Alrighty there guys, it's going to be day four of the fire alarm system replacement. Today is going to be a big day because this is our final day where we can be working on the system as we're going to need a full day to verify the system, so we need to get this system done today. I know the last day's video was a bit of a shorter one, I'm going to try and make this one longer and try and do a better job with filming everything. Hopefully I can get this one over 30 minutes we'll see how that goes you guys will know by the time this gets by the time you're watching this the last day's video became shorter because we spent a lot of time looking for problems with dual addresses and what comes along with dual addresses oftentimes is invalid replies so we went around sorted as much as that out as we could and troubleshoots a little bit into some ground faults and just stuff that i needed to use all 100 percent of my brain power for instead of half focusing on doing a video and when you're only working with about 60 percent to begin with that becomes more of a challenge however i'm going to try and do a better job today is going to be pretty busy because we have to get this done we have to install the whole enunciator work in this mechanical room we have to do four duct smokes which are going to be challenging and hard to reach heat detector in there and then i think there's some bells and strobes to still do in one section and then also of course try and get rid of these ground faults that we have well with that Let's get to work and get into this video. Or at least for the gym. No, it was over there. Hmm? It was over here somewhere. Oh, I think it's this guy. Yeah. Okay, I've got four duct detector housings and four of the five foot sampling tubes. Don't do that. And, um,. Ready to go up there and do some duct detectors. The smoke heads are already up there. Stop that. So we have a duct detector here. This is AHU1, one here. And there's one up above there. There was a heat detector all the way up there. And back here. There is one here, and another one all the way up there. This one, I don't know how we get the sampling tube out with the wall right there. I'll start with this one. These all go to the test switch, it looks like, which we won't be putting back because they're not legal anymore, from what I've heard. No plates left, but there's resistors. What? Yeah. 
my god. One's out! This thing totally just looks like a piece of EMT with holes in it. I bet you could put it in a bender and bend it. Then then use it as conduit and uh, say it's for ventilation. Does it? That's all I could come up with. Hey? That's all I could come up with because I didn't want these terminals being way the f back here. Right. That's, I thought that'd be a pain in the ass. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. In line? Yeah, that's what I did. Well, this way and this way, right? Yeah. yeah. Not horizontal. The airflow is that way, so I assume tube two. I think I did it right. Well, yeah, because it's probably the air's going the other way. It's probably a horizontal duct. That's probably what we're thinking of. 
Remember this thing bends too. Jamie, remember these things bend in the middle. You take a screw out and they fold. The duct detector. You need. That will make things easier depending on how you're trying to mount it. Yes. The red cap goes on the end of the sampling tube. Okay, so the air flow is coming this way. Mine used to go out the other side of the duct too, but the new one's too short. <laughs> the old one the side? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the new one's just gonna have to sit there, I guess. Yeah, enough, yeah. I don't know what else we do. All right, appreciate it. We'll have to get these holes plugged later on. I've got one up there to do now. That's gonna be a shitty spot. I'm thinking if I can fit up sort of here between this pipe. Luckily, none of these ones I'm touching are non-insulated hot pipes. But I think, yeah, I can get to that. It's pretty tight. I'd be lying to you guys if I said this was a fun one to get to, trying to maneuver myself around all the gas pipes and then heating supply, return pipes, domestic water, strut, and there's just a lot going on. But at the end of the day, at least there's only a couple of these, so it's not too bad. This one I mounted at an angle, so it's still in line with the airflow. It's kind of in a weird spot on the duct. Thank you. 
I am now removing the test switch and the end of line. So I'm just unsplicing them from the circuit and pulling the BX cables right out. The test switches are no longer legal to be on duct detectors. I believe they still are on beam detectors, weirdly enough, but I could very well be wrong on that. But I have seen them in some recent buildings. So that'd be weird if they are, but either way, taking this out and obviously the end of line. All right, I got my stuff done there. That was not fun. Took out the key switch and then the line because we don't need it, it's addressable. So we're just left with our feet in. Then we go up to that one, then back down to that one. It's still done as a loop. I suppose I could have maybe T-tapped it. It's not really good practice though, but this is so short. Need some knockout failures, but don't have any at the moment. So there's this guy down here. It's not pulling though. They were pulling earlier. Well, it came on earlier though. Yeah, it did. Yeah, fair enough. You turn these ones off too. This one. Start one in here. There you go. This one's got to get cut down. Well, you are. You can buy those plugs for it. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, you did your switches first, I guess. I yeah, didn't fuck over. You doing the enunciator? Trying to. Now, for some reason, the devices I put up in there, those duct smokes, are not responding. But they're not reverse polarity because it didn't take out the isolator. So I don't know if the address wasn't set properly. Doesn't make sense because the first one came to life when I plugged it in, but then the second one didn't. Now nothing's working. So I had zero volts at my detector. And I'm going to take apart our incoming splice, which is this little 18 is what brings it in. See if I get voltage once I take it apart. Something tells me I'm not going to, so I can just take one side off of there. Weird, and now I'm getting it. Okay. And then when I go on here, I'm still getting it. What the f so why isn't it working at my detector? If I take apart my splice in the middle here, then what happens? So I've completely opened it up. My SLC is coming in, going straight up to that detector up there. So I'll see if I have voltage there. I don't see any reason I shouldn't. Because I just had voltage there and I put it back together to only do that higher one and I didn't have anything there. This doesn't make any sense. Killing me, small. And this is the second one in the line and it lit up earlier. That's the last one. Cause after that it comes back to the end of line, which is just open right now. And it was fine earlier and then all of a sudden it's not. Got the back box for the enunciator in here now. I didn't, but coworker did. And two sets that were doing the same thing that said clamper. No, but this right here, we're, let's change. There's no number. Oh, it's not These zone. These are conventional. No, 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 no. Where's, wait, what, what number is that? In the portables here, these are staying conventional, but a few things had to be done. First, we needed to make the bell circuit class A, so we took advantage of one of the blue strobe circuits. Let me pause that there, because I now have a better understanding of what's been done. So basically, it used to be that the portables would go off, the school would go off, and the school would go off, the portables go off, one big system. Now each portable has its own system, and the blue strobe is still going to work independently. If there is a fire alarm in portable 3, only portable 3 is going to go off, and it's not going to set the, the building off. It's still going to trip the alarm relay and call, call fire department monitoring, all that, but it's not going to set bells off everywhere. Now, I don't really like this idea, but it is technically legal, and it's only going to be temporary as these portables are coming out as of, well, the end of summertime. Hopefully this new building will be complete. Now, it's still legal. So as long as the engineer is, signs off on it and is fine, then this will stay like this. So basically is what's been done is the bell circuit for each portable has been made class A, where it comes out of the control module on two wires. Then it goes through the bell in the portable and through the blue strobe and then back on what used to be the blue strobe's power to light up only that blue strobe for that portable specifically. But now because the bells are going to only ring in which portable the alarm goes in, 
that blue strobe can be tied in just a normal bell circuit and there what used to feed the blue strobe as a separate power source is now going to be the return leg of the class A loop. So each portable is going to be done that way where each one has the blue strobe tied onto the bell circuit and is a class A loop and and each portable will only set each portable off and if the school goes off it won't set any of the portables and, off. Uh, and the initiating we have to find every end of line resistor and change it so each portable has a zone for like the pull stations and, and heat are on, on one zone and then there's the sprinkler system so there's like two or three flows, two or three tampers. There's also a heat trace monitor to monitor that there's power in the heat trace so that has an end line resistor has to get changed too and we're just trying to sort out all of this. So there's three of these portables. Okay, figured out what I did here. I'm a complete idiot. I was using both positive and both negative terminals instead of putting it on the one for the communication. I'm using the conventional one too. Um, so this one needs to go here and this one needs to go here, I believe. I can't really see, but I'll, I'll figure it out. So completely my fault, I'm an idiot. That's the problem. Okay, I already fixed the other one. Now check this out. Put that on there. And there she comes to life. That's embarrassing. That's really stupid of me. I, have, I know better too, because I've done these before. I never made that mistake. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Obviously, I wasn't thinking, I was just going for it. I'm not sure why I made that mistake. It's fixed now. Okay, these are now working as they should. Okay, really glad that's fixed. Now, we're gonna, those are gonna be hopefully into the system just fine as they should be. hadn't been changed it was like 15k ohms or something i can't remember exactly what it was but it was causing us a short circuit on the bells so i'm trying to get all those sorted out now just change this to the new resistor value okay i just went back to the panel checked that the resistor here that one has that short removed but now i need to find NAC circuit two i don't see two on this floor so if we go up to the second floor Two is this guy right here. So that one must not have the right resistor. That's the only circuit on the panel as far as NAX. It's still saying short circuit. So probably uh, too low of a value resistor. Back upstairs again. The other guy said that he already changed that end of line, but I don't know what would be causing that short circuit then. I guess I'll double check it. Hopefully it's an end of the line. Usually it is. So that's always nice if that's an end of the line. Then it's a lot easier than tracing through the circuit to find it. And uh, yeah. Hey. hey. Yeah, reverse polarity or, or no, it doesn't do that anymore. No, that's the older devices that would cause short if it's backwards. I don't think the newer ones do anything. So I don't think it is reverse polarity. So I think they changed that after the advanced series. The end of line resistor was completely fine. So and I don't think reverse polarity on those devices causes a short. I don't think. The enunciator is in here now. We're going to ring the bells to see what area is the affected short circuit because we don't actually fully know what is affected by it. So we'll be hearing it for the first time. Stopped. Yeah, they're not going off. Oh my god. 
God. <laughs> that ain't right. But you know what I mean, Nick? Like, wouldn't it be? It's mo it'd be a very unlikely to be uh, a splice under um, under a blank plate, right? I wouldn't think so. Well, that wasn't much. Unless it was straight up just the wrong wires, but they would, like you told me like early. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you for a fact, this one down here isn't going. What? Which one? That one isn't going. Really? No. Okay. This classroom's not going. Oh. This classroom's not Should going. Do you start looking in the ones that aren't going? That one's not going. It's check that one over there. Yeah, it, is it is going. That one's going. That's going. So check the ones that aren't going. Yeah. The one in, in that room is where Rob's standing. Uh, double check it. This one's not. Yeah, and part of this section. All the way down there isn't going? How about the other side? Oh, I can see it's good. Good. Oh, but that classroom's good. Maybe, I don't know. This one's not good and all the way around on the side and you're too off. Okay, so there's quite a bit then. Yeah, I don't know, I'm not there. So you maybe check that one. And put it in the system. Okay. Um, did we splice it in? I think I spliced it in there, so that could be okay. Should somebody in the other side of the house? Yeah, there's a few. What are you talking about? That's too quiet. Because half of them aren't working. No, they're working here. Except for what? Except for that one. <laughs> one here too. You put that be it? Where is this one? Yeah, that's These ones still aren't running down here. I, I fixed it. <laughs> Fix that one, okay. Yeah. Should I open that one up? Or two. What? Yeah, it's That's... all the way down to that end. I, thought, I didn't know this was zone, I thought zone two starts here. That's what I thought too. What? Right. I open this one up just for the element. <laughs> This zone's not going either. Doesn't look like any of this is going. No, our gym's not going either. No, 
No, there's lots not going. So the first technician that was working on site didn't plug in the rear XP6 CA card and the, the technician that was on site now didn't know that so that's why some areas weren't running. Now the second card got plugged in and now is what you're going to see is what happens when the full system's running and it is drawing too much power for the panel's power supply and keeps tripping out on overload. I have no idea, he keeps leaving. I don't know, it's like it got silenced now. Huh. Oh. Oh my god. I don't know what's going on, oh, to be honest. No. <laughs> okay. Well, it's kind of hard to check when it's like that. <laughs> what the hell is that? Where did you go out to? You, you just like... <laughs> okay, this is useless. I thought we're getting nowhere fast. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that we're getting a. I don't know. She. It's just pulsing. So the bells were ran off the auxiliary power, not the main rail of the power supply, and we switched it to the main rail, hit drill, and just as we hit drill and the horns pulsed for one second, the entire panel went down. Just killed the whole thing. So every product has a sheet that shows how much current it draws at what volume what candela you can obviously tell there's going to be lots of possible combinations for current so as we had some we had a couple horns on high i think just one and then we had some strobes only i believe we had like 10 strobes alone we did a first we did a basic calculation at all strobes being at 110 candela strobes alone not even considering horns and that already had us at 8 amps. Keep in mind, we're trying to run that off a 3 amp power supply. 3 amps plus then the what's powering the panel, which is a separate rating. So that is 8 amps for just the strobes, not considering that the majority of devices also have a horn set to low volume, which is definitely the smaller uh, current draw factor in the device. The strobes take up so much more current, especially once they're at a higher candela. And that was 53 strobes and 43 of those devices are horn strobes that weren't even factored the horn into that calculation that came up with 8 amps. Theoretically, even if we bumped the strobes all the way down to 30 candela, we would still be at, I believe it was 3 point something amps, nearing 4. So the strobes, no matter what candela they were at, are going to be really pushing it for the power supply. And at 110, they're going to be well over double the capacity. Now, just considering the horn strobes with factoring in the horn current, 43 of those at low volume, 110 candela is over 6 amps alone, plus our 10 other strobe only devices. So we've split the whole. Our synchronization. So that's now split between the aux power and the main rail. So one one card is being ran off aux and then uh, not ideally. That's not ideal. Yeah, it's brighter than fifteen. For that. We've definitely lost sync. Looks like how the school looked before. So the aux power is powering one of the cards and the other card is being paid, powered off the main rail and that's also powering the main CPU. Oh, that is weird. So I just realized that wasn't actually that obvious in the video. What I was saying was weird is that that one horn strobe 
Actually, I found a couple that were doing strobe only. The horn wasn't going, but just the strobe. And interesting enough, there's actually partial synchronization. Some devices, some areas are synchronized as normal, but then others obviously aren't. That's not synced. That's not synced at all. That's sync, Jamie? Yeah, perfect. Woo! <laughs> this is fun! Woohoo! Nothing's in sync, it's crazy, man. Notifier technical support's being called because there's no reason that shouldn't be syncing. Sync 1A modules are working, everything's programmed fine, installed fine, and... Chasing down a ground fault in the portables, trying to find the ground fault. So technical support was pretty well useless. They basically agreed and said, yeah, that's not right. But we have seen that quite a bit. So they keep selling this product even though they know it doesn't always work. I've dealt with these before. This isn't my first time I've seen these XP6CAs, I believe is the model with the Sync 1As, that don't work properly. They definitely don't follow a synchronization output from a panel, but they should still follow each other's sync. That's literally what they're supposed to do and a booster panel can follow their sync. It's just them that have the problem. They can't follow a panel's sync, which like fine, whatever, but it should still follow each other's sync and they're not. And um, technical support said that, that this happens often and there's not really a fix. So just like when we dealt with the sync problem at the high school, this is going to be the only solution. Again, the same thing, put boosters in. Six by six, one inch out. Down over to do boosters. Bo two boosters. Yeah. Two boosters. Boot boosters. So these here, both of these XP6 CAs are completely not doing what they need to do at all. Completely bad. Only two troubles that are left is our battery and that the piezo is disabled, which will obviously be turned back on. The plan is here is to put a close nipple in, six by six, one inch down, two booster panels. The batteries actually don't need to be as big in here. So originally is how this was, was everything was ran off the aux power, was too much tripping it out. So then we put it on the main rail power, which is also powering the CPU. And that was also too much for that. And in, when we hit drill, it killed the whole system, took the whole panel right down. So then we split it, put one of these on aux power, one on the main power. And then that was fine, but our synchronization called technical support. They basically said, yeah, that sucks. That happens lots. <laughs> that's, that's literally it. So those hopefully are never going to be specced again on any jobs, whether here or just in general, as they don't seem to ever work. So instead, we're going to be doing what we had to do at that high school to rectify it where those wouldn't work is put in a separate booster panel. We have so many circuits. We need two of them, which are going to go on the side. And that means the batteries don't need to be as big in here. We were originally going to do 35s were ordered, but they wouldn't fit. So then we'd do 26s. But now we're going to put 18 amp hour batteries in here and each booster. And that sh should be fine. Also need the elevator guy to come to put that detector in. That's another thing. That's going right. to get done. And then the tie into the security panel. So that's where we made it for today is we gotta get the boosters in and then that should fix it up. These are just terrible. I was wondering about these from the beginning, why we're going with these, but then I guess all in theory they should work, but they never actually do. And yeah, so that's unfortunate. Someone's gonna make this my fault in the comments, I know, but really wasn't anybody's fault on site here. It was who spec this order. Somebody that doesn't actually have field experience, most likely, or not much of it. And, which, to be fair, it should work, but it doesn't. 
So yeah. I guess that's gonna be it for this one. I'm not really liking how this video turned out because I know I didn't get a lot of footage, but it was a lot of troubleshooting stuff again. But hey, at least you heard the horns. Tomorrow we'll be starting verification. So that's gonna be, that'll be the big day. So that's gonna be it for this one. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you do have any comments, questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section. If you do enjoy my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, I have an Instagram account at Pickle 700 for bonus stuff, stuff posted earlier than you'd see it on the YouTube channel, that sort of thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching.